الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continue on in our study in basic fiqh in umd tahkam in the hadith a hadith or about hayth you know about some of the ahkam some of the rulings pertaining to menstruation to the menstruation menstruating woman we reached the hadith of aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha which shows us the permissibility of speaking while taking a ghusl, you know, speaking while taking a shower. Of course, if you're not in a place where it's enclosed, where you, akramakum Allah, where you uh, uh, use the bathroom, you urinate and defecate. And that, so it shows us the difference also in the style of restroom, so to speak, that in those times, they just found a place, a secluded place, but now, are where we shower and where we urinate is the same area so uh, perhaps the ahkam will be a, a different a bit different that we should not speak when we're in the bathroom but if we're in a separate area then it's permissible to where it's separated from the restroom or separated from the area in which you uric, urinate and defecate then in that situation it's permissible to speak in the in the in the place where you wash yourself and another benefit uh, this hadith also illustrates for us the uh, permissibility of the husband and wife to see each other when they're shower and to shower together an Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha qalat kuntu aqtasilu ana wa rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam min ina'i min ina'in wahidin kilano junub ruahu bukhari wa muslim wa filaf fa kana ya'murni fa'tazilu fa yubashirni wa ana hayd in this hadith or these ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which illustrate for us again the permissibility for the husband and wife to shower together and see one another. As we've mentioned previously, that there are some cultures, unfortunately, where the husband and wife, they don't even view it as permissible to look at each other. Period. Even to see the woman's face. And that's extreme. That has nothing to do with Islam. But Islam allows, as we know, the Prophet, the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, where he and his wives would take showers together, him and one of his wives at the same time, from the same bucket or container of water. So in this hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, she said that myself and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to shower together, you know, used to wash ourselves together when we had, you know, after having relations, akramakum Allah. And we would use one bucket or one container of water they would share one container of water and then she said and he used to uh, touch me or he used to order me to uh, to cover myself to cover my lower part of the body and he would you know touch me sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while I was menstruating so that lets us know that for the menstruating woman and, and, and her husband, if she's married, that it's permissible for them to do everything except entering her, akramakum Allah, through sexual relations uh, in, in the vagina, and of course through the anus, akramakum Allah. The, the anus, of course, is always prohibited in Islam, but it's permissible for the husband and wife to enjoy one another while the woman is menstruating except for with those two exceptions we just mentioned so this hadith illustrates for us that and some of the other benefits we gain is that when water touches uh, water that is washing somebody who is junub you know who, who has sexual impurities that water does not become nudges 
So that's another fight that we get from this hadith. That if water, uh, it, it, it gets on somebody who is, who is junub, that water, because even the Prophet Sallallahu even there is hadith about using water which is musta'mal, water that is used water. Okay? And letting us know that that is also permissible. So that water does not become nudges, even if someone made a ghusl from it. As long as, of course, the impurities, you know, weren't clearly dropping in there and, and so forth, that, that you have clear najasa in there. And in another narration, وَكَانَ يُخْرِجُ رَاسُهُ وَهُوَ مُعْتَفِكٌ فَاقْسِلُهُ وَأَنَا حَيْدٌ So in another narration, in Bukhari, in Muslim, the Prophet wasallam while Aisha anha, while she was during her men, men, menstrual cycle and the Prophet was making itikaf in the masjid he was uh, because the, the masjid and where the Prophet وسلم, lived his room uh, salatu wasalam, and his wife's compartments their rooms were uh, right next to the masjid in the time of the Prophet so the Prophet وسلم, was able while he was making itikaf you know he was in keeping himself away in seclusion in the masjid just to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe during Ramadan he would take during Ramadan and he would uh, you know have his head outside of his door or his window or what have you uh, outside of the door of the masjid or the window of the masjid and Aisha would be in her room and she would uh, she would comb his hair Or she would wash his hair. She would wash his hair while he was in intikaf and she was menstruating. To also show us that, of course, it's permissible to to touch one another and, and stuff just because she has this this blood, uh, this this menstruating menstrual her menstrual cycle. It does not have any effect on her body and, and you know things like this as far as you know, her being Najasa or something like this, which would be a very strange thing. So it shows us Islam uh, does not belittle the woman. It does not belittle those natural cycles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the women and given uh, given us as human beings different stages in life that we go through. That that does not make us impure as human beings. However, there are cer certain rel uh, relationships and certain ahkam or rulings pertinent to when a woman's menstruating or when a person is has sexual impurities or they have ejaculated a chronicle of law or what have you that they're not permissible to pray in that state until they become pure for the woman who is menstruating and for the person who has has had sexual relations they must shower themselves first before they are able to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, another some of the benefits of this hadith is that this hadith shows us of course the permissibility of showering together uh, for the husband and wife showering together and them being in a, se a state of sexual impurity. Another hadith, another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us also the permissibility of that the husband can touch his wife while she's menstruating, everything except for entering her private part, the karamakum Allah, and that her body is pure, and it's due to the najasa of her height is the illa, that's the reason while he can't enter her, it's not because she has changed uh, in any way or her body is najasa or what have you. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates the recommend, that it's recommended istihbab to wear the izar, to wear like a waist sheet uh, during the time when the husband and wife are uh, if they're enjoying one another and she's menstruating and this is to protect from getting uh, possibly to protect from getting uh, uh, you know getting blood or or anything on 
on your your partner, Kramak Allah. So this is this is also it's mustahab. But of course, at this time we have other ways aside from just the waist sheet where a woman can, uh, you know, she can wear her pads and things like this in order to protect from, uh, you know, spreading the, that najasa, spreading that blood, the, the menstruation blood uh, around and so forth. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us the importance of taking the steps to prevent falling into the Muharram. So this is a, a big fight, and this is a fiqh principle again, a qa'idah fiqiyah, sad dhara'i, sad dhara'i. And this here means that basically you're cutting off the path to falling into the haram. And how does this, this hadith illustrate this? This hadith illustrates this principle because by if the woman makes the izar, if she puts the, the waist garment on while she's menstruating and, she, and their, her and her husband are enjoying one another, then in that situation, by putting the waist sheet on, this is cutting off the chance that he will get carried away and maybe they will actually have sexual relations or what have you, because there will be a garment there to prevent that. And so this is a way in which this can help uh, cut off the path to falling into the haram because it is impermissible in Islam for a man to have sexual relations with his wife when she is menstruating. So to enter her during that time is haram in Islam. It's a major sin and it is you will have uh, uh, you know najasa on you and it is not permissible in Islam to uh, to, uh, to to indulge in najasa. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the also from this hadith some of the ulama they deduce that this hadith illustrates the impermissibility of a woman entering the masjid when she's ha during her menses because the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was in itikaf Aisha didn't go in the masjid and wash his hair but he had his hair out and she uh, washed her her hair in that situation she washed his hair and that was from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we ask Allah the Almighty those are some of the benefits we gain from this hadith we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect from myself and the shaitan Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ala Nabi Muhammad Wa Ala Alaihi Wasallam